am Quinn. My presentation is how not to get obliterated by aliens. And I am not a scientist. I'm not a specialist in any field yet. I just find these space related things very interesting. And I'm excited to share my thoughts on this topic because it's something that's really important to think about Phil, uh, in you know almost a philosophy of uh, really ethics in a way with treating uh, any visitors that we could have from whether that's aliens from space or if it's just us trying to interact with ourselves because we are pretty bad at that given recent events. So it could even help us uh, thinking about the extremes can also help us with our own interactions. So uh, let's get right into it. And where are we going to start? Uh, what questions need to be asked? So you can type like in chat um, what you think maybe the biggest question that needs to be answered when we have aliens coming over. We oh, still don't see. Uh, yeah, we still don't. Oh, you can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's weird. We saw it a second ago, and then it just. Okay, you know. hold on a minute. Oh man. Um, resume share. Okay, let me know if this fixes it. No more. Zoom. <sighs> now we see it. I think the problem is when you click on yeah. Yeah, don't, 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 don't ju just just go through the one. That, That's frustrating. Yes. This part. Okay. Just don't go into the slideshow and it will work. We, I don't we, know why my zoom is being so weird. That's, that's okay. We, All right. we, we, we'll we just see. do it this way, I guess. Yeah. yeah. No, no worries. Um, as long as you can still read it, then, or, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. My Zoom is not being uh, cooperative right now. Picked a very bad time to, to start acting up. Anyway, so what are the major questions that we need to ask? And you can type any ideas that we have in the chat that are like maybe a starting question, uh, a major thing that would need to be solved, uh, whether that's you know how they get here or what we should do, uh, the major kind of thinking that we should apply. So if you have any ideas on this, then you can type you, that. You mean questions about aliens, whatever questions. Yeah, questions about, about, about mm -hmm. the initial before contact or during it. Um, like the major things that need to be addressed. We have some uh, questions, I mean, suggestions. Should we contact uh, them? Uh -huh. You sh could share a language and dialogue. Want to know if they also had an issue with perpetual growth and how they fixed mm -hmm. it. So for me, the major question is obviously, how do you get there? Because right now, we generally don't have a good way of traveling from star systems, uh, from solar system to solar system, or from galaxy to galaxy. Um, and it could be even farther than that, that they're going. So, you know, if you're traveling in a spaceship, it's not really going to work. They're not going to be able to get here in, you know, a four-day road trip. It's not going to work. So any of the aliens that get here, they would have to be a lot more advanced technologically than us. So maybe instead of traveling in some spaceship, like from a sci-fi movie, you could travel through a wormhole, which could help you skip across. Instead of worrying about, I'm going to go, you know, millions and millions of light years, I could just go a few through this wormhole. And that's probably the fastest way of getting across um any point in space time and you would then have to worry about how do you create one because you can't just find one and hope it goes to the right spot that's not really going to do anything either you have to figure out some way of creating one in the way you want so creating one you first need something absolutely massive and that's already really difficult to do because really big things are hard to control they're hard to move around and bring where you want but let's assume that you figure out something big enough and accessible enough to create this warp in space-time. 
you wouldn't actually be able to make it through because it's so unstable, it would collapse, you would uh, um, slip into kind of, you would slip out of the wormhole or um, you wouldn't be able to make it through because it's so unstable. Obviously, it's unstable because you're literally bending space time. So you'd have to solve the instability. And the only way it seemed like to me to solve that was using these things called cosmic strings and electrically charged black holes. So the cosmic strings are basically two, uh, they're like fractured strands of space time. And you would use those to space apart the black holes and keep them from interacting apart from the uh, wormhole itself. Uh, because the cosmic strings, they're useful because they don't really move at all. Once they're created, they kind of just stay where they are. Um, so you would be able to use that almost to create a sort of tension between the black holes to stop them from moving. Um, but let's assume that you figure all this out and somehow the aliens get here. Uh, some futuristic method, we can't comprehend it. Now what happens? So for the rest of the presentation, we'll be doing kind of like a choose your path style game, similar to maybe a book you would have as a kid um, where, yeah, you can choose what, uh, what outcomes you get. Yeah, like a decision tree. So here are the rules. So we'll be given a prompt and that will have three solutions and we'll vote in a Padlet, which I'll link in the chat shortly. Um, and the highest voted one will get chosen and we'll move on. And then we'll repeat that a few times until we get an outcome. And we can go through that cycle one or two times, depending on how much time we have left. And we'll be given a new prompt and um, yeah. So it's essentially just a tree. I think there's three decisions we'll make until we get a final outcome and these, aren't necessarily the right answer. You don't have to pick the right answer. This is a thought experiment. So let's make things interesting. You can pick the one that would get us obliterated immediately if you want to. Um, yeah, whatever path we want to. It's not a test of, oh, well, which one is the smartest thing to choose? Um, and yeah, we'll repeat a few times and we'll get our outcome. And these are just my interpretations, brief kind of predictions. These aren't necessarily true because there's no way of telling how anything like this would play out. And we don't even know if it's possible for anything like this to happen at all. So it's just a thought experiment at the end of the day, but let's go ahead and start up. And our first prompt is aliens are here. What should we do? And I will link the Padlet in the chat so we can vote on this. So give me one sec. And that should be in chat now. And I think there's uh, the ability to, there should be the ability to just heart one of the posts or one of the three solutions in there. So do that with whichever one you prefer and I'll bring back up the presentation. Um, so let me know if that works or not. Um, okay. But I'll read out the solutions while everyone's doing that. So okay. yeah, maybe while people are looking at the Padlet, read. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. So a, we could be super aggressive and be like, oh, we uh, we have a problem, but we have big bombs that we can blow up. Let's just get them out of here. So we'll try attacking them with uh, nuclear bombs, whatever. Uh, anything that we think is destructive enough to keep them away. Solution B is trying to communicate with them uh, peacefully. And then C is just do nothing and see what they're here to do. So I will check on the Padlet and see what people have voted on. Okay, it sounds like 
B has the overwhelming majority here. So that's what we're going to try. So we've tried peaceful communication. What should we try first? How should we communicate with them first? So I'll reset this real quick. Um, this didn't work. Hold on. All right, I'm going to duplicate these. OK, and I need to do this for this one as well. OK, and so just vote on the one uh, that doesn't have any yet, the ones with the zero hearts on them. I'm going to have to do this manually for each one. But yeah, uh, just vote on the ones that are here. So please read the options yeah. again. So what method of communication should we use? We have solution A is uh, try to understand the language before engaging and observe how they interact. Solution B is uh, try to give them something, uh, present them something to assure that we want peaceful interactions or C would be immediately try to communicate and use universal concepts like mathematics and things like that, that we generally believe would be the same for them. And I'll check on the Padlet and see. A and B are tied. Nope, they're all tied. We have more people than that, so go yeah. ahead. So I'll wait a, one more sec and see if there's going to be any more. It looks like A is going to be the winner here. So we'll go with A, understand their language, and communicate observing after observing how they interact. So we've successfully created a basic vocabulary and machines to speak it. And that's really important because um, the chance of this, the alien creatures, you know, evolving to evolving the same kind of uh, system of communication in like vocal cords and using uh, respiration to speak is the chances of that happening is pretty low. So you would have to likely just create some system that can produce the same sounds. But we figured that out. That wouldn't be too difficult. What do we say? Solution A, we can be all grumpy and just tell them to get out of here. Solution B, we could ask them why they're here. And C is uh, start rambling about Earth and explain uh, how stuff works. And I will check on this again in one sec. Um, going to have to paste these again. And again, just vote on the ones that have zero hearts already. And I'll read the solutions again. A is tell them to leave. B is ask them why they're here, and C is explain Earth, explain uh, what they're standing on exactly. And it seems like B is the winning one. So ask them why they are here. And this is the outcome, the first outcome slide. So they explain that they have been searching for other life and we are one of many struggling young civilizations they've found. So they offer to help us with better power sources. And obviously we're going to accept that because all the scientists and uh, people working on the climate are going to be very happy that somebody is over here finally telling us guys, you're not doing stuff right. 
but we do remain cautious because we're wary that they could turn at any time. Obviously, they're, this is an interaction we've never had before, so you want to be um, ready for anything to happen. You don't know how they're going to act, but this you could consider a good outcome. Uh, they attempt, at least, to uh, help us turn our situation around on Earth. And I think we probably have time to go back and do another one. I'm not sure when I started this presentation. Um, you know what, uh, Queen, uh, I also wanted to give Maya some time. So, But I really loved how you bring up all of these philosophical questions and show people how they branch out and branch out and branch out. Um, we don't really know the answers to these questions. How do we prepare? How do we do all of this? Uh, mental experiments, right? How right. do we deal with unknown, with something that we really don't know how to deal with, right? What are our right. first steps? And I think <clears throat> your representation on asking questions and asking more questions and going deep with those questions is just the way to go. And this is yeah. also an amazing way to engage people in thinking yeah. about science. Yeah. Making it an interactive thing. Yeah, keeps everybody listening and ready for the next next slide. But do you want me to wrap up then? Um, uh, so Maya can go? Sure. OK. So now, what conclusion can we take? Because we have gone through this thought experiment, and now we need to answer why we've thought about this and why it's significant. So the first thing is we should not try to act tough. We shouldn't act like the dominant uh, group, because if aliens get over here, they will outclass us by potentially millions and millions of years of development. So we are the little kids who have no idea what they're doing compared to them. So we shouldn't sit there and try to act like the dominant species like we love to do on Earth. We'd have to realize that we are not the dominant species in this situation, and we should be really careful about how we present ourselves. Now, the next major thing is we absolutely cannot afford to be reckless because if we try to launch some sort of military operation there's a good chance that they would retaliate and um we could be at best minorly destroyed uh you know our cities wrecked and at worst the entire earth is obliterated so you uh you have to be extremely careful about not going the aggressive route. You need to be welcoming to the visitors, wary about them, because we have no idea what they're doing here, and we haven't had an interaction like this before. But you don't want to take the uh, approach we tend to do against other countries or things like that when they are invading, because that's almost what it would be like. a An unknown, it's almost like the, uh, um, you know, people coming from Europe to uh, North America in the uh, 1400s, where you've got these people who are arguably, they have some more, not better, more sophisticated, but they have different technology. And they're presenting it and they're kind of taking over. And you don't want to present yourself as a uh, negative or, you know, you don't want to try to be the aggressor. And you might add, you might say, well, we're smart enough. We're smart enough to not attack the aliens. We're smart enough to, to uh, be careful. Okay, so apply that logic to climate change. You could say, oh, we're smart enough to not destroy our climate, which could cause our extinction, like aliens, you know, attacking our alien visitors could. 
or you could say we're smart, we should be smart enough to not uh, start a nuclear war or nearly start a nuclear war. But both of those things, we are not smart enough to avoid. We've done both of those things. We're destroying our climate and we are uh, in the middle of a war that could be pretty problematic. So the argument doesn't really stand that we'd be smart enough. You can never really tell what we're going to do because at the end of the day, you can't rely on rational actions prevailing because we're not rational beings. But that's it for the presentation. Uh, thanks for coming. The process of creating this was a really good learning experience. It was, and I hope it was enjoyable to uh, participate in. And I hope the interactive part worked well uh, with the concept. So that's it. If there are questions, then fire away in chat or, uh, yeah. Um, I have a question. So there's a lot of debate around the idea of METI, messaging extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, yeah. And some people like Stephen Hawking are, think that it's too big of a risk, but then other people argue that given how much we could learn from a more advanced civilization that could help us through some of the extinction level bottlenecks that we're facing, it's more of a risk not to reach out and try to see if anyone else is out there. Kind of like not, not turning on the SOS signal on a sinking raft or something like that. But then on the other hand, some people are afraid that we don't really know who's out there and you know, um, it might have a lot of unforeseen consequences. So where do you stand on that debate? Do you think we should be reaching out or do you think we need to stay quiet? Well, I understand the perspective of the people who would be afraid to because it's unknown. We are afraid of, of unknown things. And um, it would be a really major thing to happen. And uh, it would be a pretty difficult thing for a lot of people to be able to live with that there are other beings that are here or that we've reached out to that are potentially going to be interacting with us. And knowing how reckless we can be, you might expect the same thing from aliens, um, regardless of how different they are from us. Uh, you could expect a similar mindset of we are going to, yeah, maybe not present ourselves in the best way. And I also understand the side of uh, we have some big problems and maybe it will be a good idea to ask somebody who uh, knows what they're doing. Because generally, if you have an issue with something, you want to ask someone who is more of an expert at it to help you out. And that would be very similar to the situation of asking some aliens that have space travel. If they have that good of a harness around energy, they would be able to apply it uh, and teach it to us as well, I would assume. Um, or at least kind of nudge us in the right direction away from what we are doing. Because there's no way they would be able to get over here if they're still running on coal. Like, that wouldn't work. You can't run on oil or whatever uh, their equivalent to fossil fuels would be. You would have to have a really good energy source. That's where, I think that's where I would stand on it. The, it maybe would be a good idea to ask for some help because we definitely need it. Yeah, um, that's kind of my perspective also. I'd also just like to say that um, if, I, I mentioned this in the chat, but um, in case you didn't read it, if they ever do come, I hope that you're on the team making the decisions. And I we'll see. That. Question one is if they will come, because we don't know if that's even possible. True. But we could expect anything, right? After all, what? It's like, thousands of people that think they're already here and there's thousands of people that think they've built things here so you never know you never know who's going to be the first to see one but that'll be a question uh, we can only address when it happens but yeah are there any other uh, burning questions in the chat
I'll jump in for one quick minute. I, I don't want to steal too much time from Maya. Um, but one, uh, great presentation. I really loved it. I'm part of a team who are currently working on developing a new Voyager Golden Record, um, a new message from humanity to go out to the stars, uh, launching around 2036. Um, and so there's a bunch of us in the world who are interested in this question of what message to send to the stars. But let, let's say aliens come and they do obliterate us and we're gone. What what message do you want to leave for other species out there in the future to know what we were? Um, what what so for instance is there a, is there a song, a book, a movie, an animal, some piece of inspiration, some history of life on Earth that you think is the most important thing that would tell someone who we were after we're gone? Well, I mean that's a really difficult question to answer in a short amount of time, but. Uh, I guess to lump it all into one general grouping, you would probably want to, if your goal is to send something that will be found by other civilizations, you would want to maybe focus on what we have done wrong so that they don't do the same thing. So they don't make the same mistakes that we do. Uh, say, yeah, we probably were going to go extinct anyway because we're too divided on very obvious topics um, or that at least should be pretty simple to understand like climate change you should be able to understand that we have a problem and we need to fix it but nobody wants to fix it and that's at the end of the day the biggest problem that we have so things like that explain somehow um, figure out a way to convey our mistakes so that they're not made again that might be the best way to do that All right, should I hand off to Maya now? I think that was an amazing piece of advice. Thank you. All right, yeah. At, at least this way, we, even if we are gone, we will help someone else. Yeah, or and, try to. 